Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Well, we are in the world. Welcome to episode 11 of the Investment Blueprint. Oh, no causes. Let's get on to the show. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Uncle Andrew. You got it. Nothing that is said during this show should be construed as investment advice. Remember to conduct your own analysis and seek your own financial advisor before investing. This show is brought to you by Signature FX. And now, our feature presentation. Coming in hot! <laughs> Coming in hot, Ooh. coming in hot. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> well, listen, hey, you're, you're, you're working yourself out of a job if you carry on. I'm trying yeah. to Eli's taking his shoes, mate. I want him to do this from now on. I think no, that, that he has a job for him. Um, for his, for his, um, if if YouTube is around in ten years, um, I want to play this episode at his sixteenth birthday. <laughs> um, so you can you can look back on it. Um, how's everybody? How you guys? How you guys making out? How you guys doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. good. Yeah, we good. good. Uh, Easter weekend here in the UK. Sun is shining. Got the barbecue yeah. warming up. Obviously, yeah. got my hat on. You know, back back from Venezuela. So uh, looking forward to the show, guys. Yeah, nice. yeah. It's been a long time. I looked. I, I had a look back, and and the last show that we did was January twenty second. A lot has happened in life. So great to be back yeah. on with you guys. It's been great and the market's been yeah. fantastic. So I know we got a lot to cover and we got a great interview. But for me, I think the, the winner for the last four weeks probably XRP. You know, I know we talk about it a lot, but I, I didn't see that pump come in. And I, you know, I don't know how many research where it's come from. But but for me, uh, crypto is going to be excited like, again. And I just think yeah. Bitcoin's due to pop uh, to the upside as well. So yeah, really looking forward to what's coming in the next few months. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Have you been looking at any yeah, crypto, PJ? Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, Andrew mentioned XRP and a few other coins that um are associated with that ISO twenty thousand and twenty two batch. Um, you know, those those are definitely um something to look up and look forward to for the upcoming months. I think we've seen some bottoms and some reversals happen um, or some uh you know some some monthly charts and um yeah i think also the anticipation of the sec case um finally coming to some sort of conclusion um yeah, was definitely, probably definitely gonna be the end of this year i think yeah, yeah i think we just yeah. end of this year but uh, maybe I, I, sooner than that yeah no that'll be brilliant It'll be really good yeah but uh yeah. Acor- according to uh some of those legal uh I guess characters that are involved with the XRP community, um, they feel that maybe like a month out, we might see some resolution. Yeah, so I think um, that's something to look forward to. Absolutely, um, and I, I I do think that um, you guys have been basically looking at this for quite a long time. This is not this is not the the first time that you've mentioned it, and I do yeah. think. Eventually, if you've been dollar cost averaging, dollar cost averaging, dollar cost averaging, I think mm-hmm. you'll be happy that you did. Absolutely. Um, at, by the end of the year. Um, but let, let's go over to the interview now. We have uh, a very special interview guest, um, Mr. Jean Luca. He's an entrepreneur, expertise as a final con- uh, financial consultant. Um, he lives in Los Angeles, California. He was born and raised in Bermuda. And um, he works with brands like Peloton, Perrier, Fender, Facebook, Usain Bolt, uh, WizKid, and Wyclef Jean. Um, he's also appeared on ABC, CBS, CNN, HGTV, Hulu, and now the Investing Blueprint. So without further ado, um, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, John Luca to our show. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We have Jean Luca in the house. Jean Luca in the house. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Yeah, it's nice to have you, man. Um, we've been trying for a while to get you on. So um, I, I just want to start off with a very sort of general question. What kind of has been your journey to get you to where you are now to bringing us before our audience today? Sure. Um, wow. Wow. <laughs> Let me answer that quickly. <laughs> so I, I've always been a, a creative, you know. Um, my goal has always been to position myself to create without limitations. And um, I, over time, I learned that creativity isn't a specific medium. It's multiple industries, multiple skill sets. And so I, I studied, I studied production in undergrad, um, music production and business management. Then I went and got my MBA. Um, from there, I went into the working field. I was into music. I was into entrepreneurship. Um, I dabbled in like PR. I did branding and marketing for almost a year and a bit. Um, from there, I went to consulting for like startups and um, talent. I've done public speaking. It just kind of kept rolling, you know? What led me to the finance world um, was that in all my dealings, right? Whether it was like running my music company at the time or you know, advising um, other creators on how to develop their ideas and infrastructures. There was a like reoccurring issue. People who were talented, who had income potential, but very, very little to no financial infrastructure, you know? And, and I realized without financial infrastructure, sustainability is like directly impacted, right? Um, predictability is directly impacted. Um, and even to scale down from business, even relationships, like, you know, people's relationships fall apart due to poor financial um, management. So because I was already in a position to be given a lot of advice for people in developing their ideas or brands or, you know, music, I said, why not add on finance to that? Because mm. all these conversations, honestly, in many cases, in a capital capitalistic place, are worthless unless you got some money behind it. I can encourage you and talk to you about your ideas all you want, but if you can't fund it, or if you can't source funding to bring it to life, um, it's very difficult to move. So I jumped into finance and I um, been doing advising for three years now. I'm still in my creative aspect. I still, you know, I've got to work on sets for commercials and, yeah. you know, work yeah, with different yeah. celebrities and work in studios. And I still participate in that because that keeps me active in my market. But I've added, you know, to my toolbox, advising on finances because that really, that really blesses our community with something that creates wealth in mm -hmm. the present, but also for the next generation. So, yeah, yeah, you hit on something that that really touches him for me, and it's 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 a lot about the education. Um, and I, I went on your website. I'm just really blown away by the amount of stuff that you're doing. Uh, went on your website and and you, at the bottom of the, the homepage, it says something to the effect, and I'm paraphrasing, um, it's about helping one another and teaching, you know, showing each other how, how this can be done. Um, we're not taught how to invest and how to grow our wealth in school. The, the general education system is not focusing on that. Right. You have to go out and find it. So the fact that you are helping to bring about this awareness, I think, is phenomenal. Um, and you're also not just doing that. You're using your creativity. I saw you on um, speaking to Wayne Brady. Um, <laughs> I was like, how is my boy talking to Wayne Brady from whose line is it anyway? It was, like, it was great. So how did you get on the Wayne Brady show? This is off topic a bit. Sure. Um, how did you get so, on here? So I guess... It's funny how like the dots connect, right? So I'll just give you like a string of timeline that led to that. Um, I was in a band back in 2017, 2018 or so. I flew to New York to work with this vocal coach, right? I joined a class and I met this dope guy. His name's Sam, right? Sam. I connected with him. We became good friends. And then after we connected, we stayed in contact for a while. And then he actually called me and was like, yo, I'm casting for American Idol. You should um, audition for it, right? And like, I sing off of like vibes, like, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe like a Damien Molly sort of voice, right? Yeah, yeah. Not American Idol, right? <laughs> but, but anyway, it's like, I ain't gonna say no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I yeah. did it, you know, I think I, I made it up to like the celebrity judge round, right? Which was funny. We stayed in contact after that. 
Then I have a TV show idea that I'm working on. I fly him out from New York and he helps me develop this pilot. We're working. And then we just kind of keep in contact. And then I would say a couple of months after that, he calls me, he's like, hey, I'm casting for this game show and I want you to be on it. So I need you to do this, 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 submit this. And then I'm pretty sure I'm gonna just get you on. So he like coached me along the whole way, how to submit to the production and stuff like that. And then I got on the show, you know? Well done, well done. <laughs> and, I, it's great. The, and the reason why I give these stories is not to be like long-winded, but there's no like, it, it does exist, like spontaneity and like um, serendipity happens, right? Serendipity happens. But just like investing in the market, it's small activities over a long period of time that lead to like this beautiful moment that takes place, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not like I threw a Hail Mary and got on a TV show in two weeks. I had been investing in a relationship with the, with my homie for like three years. You see what I'm saying? Three and a half mm -hmm. years to the point where like I was buying plane for him to come out. I, you know, put him a part of a dope thing that I was doing. But I also like poured into his projects. He would call me all the time and that sort of stuff. So I was on top of mind. So when the opportunity came across, he was like, yo, let me get John Luke on the show. You see what I'm yeah. saying? And yeah, yeah, yeah. not to create like a weird metaphor, but it's like you dollar cost average into relationships and yeah, you don't yeah, know yeah, yeah. where that's going to go. But one day the market spikes yeah. and you end up on the show, you know, Ray and Brady. You know, there's a general interest uh, in investing, you know, to personally enjoy, you know, following the ups and downs of the markets. Sure. I mean, I wouldn't, my interest wasn't so much specifically to like investing. I think investing is a part of a whole thing of personal finance, right? I think it plays a part in that whole wheel. Um, I know taxes and stuff in the States are different uh, than Bermuda, obviously, but here, what sparked my interest, I was in a doctorate program and I was kind of going through the curriculum. I was probably like a semester and a half in and there were no courses on, per on personal finance, right? There were no courses on that. So when, when it came time to pick what we wanted our case study to be, I was speaking to the professor and I was like, well, I want my case study to be, um, why is there like from higher education, right? Some whole undergrad, I did a whole master's program and now I'm in a doctorate program. Why aren't there classes about personal, personal finance, small business and taxes um, in higher education? You know, and her response was like, well, you don't have to write a case study about that. I can tell you. You're not supposed to know. Yeah, so, so for me, you've hit the nail on the head there. So, you know, it's one thing I'm looking back at my education and yeah, we've never thought about tax, you know, national insurance, uh, you know, how the, ben the benefits maybe of, you know, starting your home ownership early. And, you know, I wish, I wish that is something they would, would teach throughout the schools and, and you know, they still don't, I believe. So yeah, that's some really good advice there. Yeah. So that's it. That's what got me into it. I said, well, this is crazy. Like, um, my parents did the best they could. Um, the teachers are only teaching once in the curriculum. But if if I'm going to make a difference or make a difference for myself and others, then I have to dive into it. So that includes taxes, you know, small businesses, understand how that grows, um, investing, all that sort of thing. So it all, it all kind of came as a package for me, for me to like talk to somebody and understand this is how it works. This is how people build generational wealth. Well, wow, that was that was powerful, you know, and it's it's so common that um I guess everybody has that kind of journey. Once you're sharing that it's this is this great piece of knowledge that you should know, and it's kind of restricted from the masses. So um, yeah, once you find that it kind of has a little internal drive to sort of like let me get that, you know what I mean? And I think that also kind of um is one of our aims here with. Signature FX, where you know we want to share that knowledge. We, we want to take everyone on that journey to kind of, you know, learn and and develop. You know, um, but yeah, that's pretty cool, man. And which brings me to the next question. You know, what advice would you give somebody new to invest in or wants to kind of improve in this space? Um, I think the first question to ask yourself is, um, what 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 makes this worth your time, you know? 
that's the first question like because it's not it's not entertainment right it's like <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. what what do you need from this you know yeah. and um and then a step further is like what's what are your goals like what a what do my clients when i ask my clients what are your personal goals what are your financial goals what are your liquidity goals you see what i'm saying what are your timelines what are your non-negotiables what can you afford to, to lose you know um and that's what, like you, you have to ask yourself these questions because you know if you're not working with an advisor then you need to advise yourself <laughs> you know because right. it's 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 really crazy it's really crazy yeah. if, if, if you don't <laughs> if yeah. you don't go in with the right mindset right so that's what i would say um one acts that and then educate yourself and right. and start start small like and scale over time you know start because i think investing is a beautiful thing but it's like if you ain't never been i have a partner the partner that actually brought me onto the company originally he always tell me the story he was like man I never went to the gym and I still don't. And I was like, well, what happened? He said, well, you know, I walked into the gym and I had never been there before. And I picked up the heaviest weights and I pushed as much as I could. And my buddy was in pain for like two weeks and I never went back. Right? Whereas mm -hmm. if he was going and just did a little bit of cardio, maybe some push ups and scaled over time, he might have been a bodybuilder by now, right? No kidding. But you get the idea. So I think it's <laughs> best. It's kind of like taking that time. Like if you if you ain't never been to the gym before, maybe you just gotta do like some motion practice. Make sure you got your form done, do some cardio, and watch some YouTube videos, or hit up your homie who like who's been in the gym, and then just scale over time. What sort of mindset tricks or tips do you have for an entrepreneur and somebody who wants to be a successful investor over the long term? Performance management right performance management is very important and that is um like there was a quote i don't know who said it but it's like in go up trust everyone else needs data you know <laughs> <laughs> i want a t-shirt like with that. that on it i want a t-shirt <laughs> you know that sounds good and, I, and that's something i've like that's a new breakthrough for me right where it's like it's not about just being busy right it's about organizing these tasks making um like kpis shorter and assessing and rebalancing what you do at a faster rate right now this is not for investing because if you're investing long term then it's a whole totally different strategy so please like i'm talking about entrepreneurs <laughs> disclaimer okay. right okay. but like if like I was telling, I was telling, you know, you guys before we hopped on, like I have about 12 projects that I'm a part of. And someone's like, whoa, that's crazy, I was five projects. But it's just like, I don't have to work on them all every day. And I'm not doing all of them by myself, right? Yeah. Well, I prioritize urgent versus important, you know? Everything's important, but not everything's urgent. Yeah. And then what are the next three steps I need to do for each of these projects? You know, and a great book, a great book that I just, that I'm actually reading now, um, is a 12 week, the 12 week year, mm -hmm. the 12 week year and the four hour work week are just ways of like being hyper-focused on exceptional output in short periods of time. Mm -hmm. So you can see fast, faster results. And yeah. one thing I'll add to that is also entrepreneur attach the success of your, you know, of your endeavor to other people, right? And that helps kind of increase its potential for success. So for mm -hmm. example, like I have Sydney Palmer, right? If I was the only person to benefit Sydney Palmer, then I'm the only one motivated to make it work, right? But I've, I've already sent out contracts to other people who are benefiting percentage wise from different aspects of this company working, which means when I'm having a down day, I get a phone call, hey, yo, John Luca, I just came across boom, 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 boom. Do you have a second? And I'm like, you know what? Let me get out of bed and work. You know? Mm -hmm. So I think attaching, yeah, attaching the success of your company to other people. Don't be afraid to share the pie a little bit. I'm not saying equity, you could do you could do profit share splits, right? For a limited amount of time, that sort of thing. But doing that, you know, like you invest it, attach the benefit of your children or your wife or your grandma to 
to what you invest in, I promise you, <laughs> you'll make wiser decisions than out there just like, you know, pressing buttons and playing, <laughs> playing it like Vegas, right? So, yeah. 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 If that comes to my favorite Bruce Lee quote. Um, he always mentions, no one's not enough, but we must do. You know what I mean? It just shares the, um, the importance of action. And, you know, I was a student, a spectator only long as well after a few burned um, accounts, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, which will do it to you, it will definitely humble you and make you go back to the drawing board. But yeah, once you start getting back involved, then you will start seeing your results. So I, that's not, I know from deviating from the show, that's an argument I have with colleagues a lot, is when people say knowledge is power, and it just flicks a switch. Knowledge is not power. And I'm sure we've done this on the show before, Mandela. It's yeah. actually it's application of that knowledge. That's where mm -hmm. the power is. That's the true power. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So when people say knowledge is power, then straight away I want to have that debate with them. And, yeah. What sort of things would you say to somebody if they're looking for diversification, John Luca? Um, they don't want too much exposure somewhere. Like what, what, what sort of secrets or tips do you think would help the average person with diversifying? When it comes to diversification, I think it comes back to what I was saying before, right? Yeah. You have to understand what you want, how long do you have to get it, and how much can you afford to put towards that goal, right? Yeah. And I yeah. think answering those questions are gonna then help you identify where diversification, what diversification looks like for you. You know, because um, there's no real secrets to give. Um, the real secret is to ask the right questions to lead you to the right um, options that are available. You get what I'm saying? Um, yeah. that, that's why. And then when you talk about diversification, Sometimes it's not just, it's not just in risk. Sometimes that diversification spreads, of course, through taxes. Sometimes that diversification spreads, of course, through liquidity, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, so yeah, that's what I would say. Um, so your diversification is across risk, across taxes, and across liquidity. Um, okay. Okay. And sometimes your dollar, you don't have enough for it to go that far right so then you have to be like well this is the only place i put my money right um which one is seems to be the most like reasonable or realistic according to my goal because you may not have enough to accomplish all of them so then you have to reassess and be like well what's priority you know um and then based on those answers you seek out and research however you need to to find out what is producing based on those metrics and mm -hmm. i think that will help you understand what you do there's actually this i forget the name of it but i'm sure you can find it somewhere there's um a lecture a stanford lecture on youtube mm -hmm. uh, about portfolio management for companies and they use different things like a white elephant an oyster your bread and butter and some other stuff and it's basically like these four categories of how to categorize like like basically how to organize what you're investing in, right? Your bread and butter is like, it's gonna make the money, it's not gonna give you crazy margins, but like you do this consistently, income is coming in, right? And I think, I could be getting it wrong, I watched this like maybe a year or so ago, but you have like oysters. Oysters is like, it takes a lot of work, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of money, but it's good for the brand, right? <laughs> type of thing. Yeah. And then you have like your white elephant, where I think it's called white elephant or unicorn or something like that, where it's kind of, it, it takes so much resources, it's so high risk. But if one goes through, if one goes through, it's game over. No, that's right? great, that's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's right. That's right. That reminds me of, yeah, that reminds me of like venture capital. Venture capital, they have out of 10 projects, they'll have one billion dollar project that pays for the other nine and and that's it you know but once again that, that comes back down to performance management you have to understand what you're doing and where it lies 
because where there is no management, right, there is um, there's no replication, duplication. There's no scalability, right? There's no learning, right? If there's no management, then failure is failure. If there is management, then failure is an opportunity to learn and grow. You know, so you have to be able to manage what you're doing. Okay, so what, what, uh, what are you most looking forward to now in 2023, uh, investing or for uh, for your company going forward? Is there any any big projects you know that you tell us about? And on the mindset side of things, I have a, a book that I'm um, co-writing with my dad. It's called A Talk of Dad. And um, it was born from these interviews we did during the pandemic, where every week I would pick a life topic, like understanding identity or overcoming heartbreak or whatever. And I would ask him like eight to 10 questions about each of these topics. And he would give like these profound answers that would lead into these great discussions. So um, I have that book that's being we're taking the audio, turning it into a book. Yeah, so the, the goal would be to create um, a hard copy that could probably drop, uh, like a, um, like a drop, it's a, it's a drop shit. Yeah, like basically like you, it goes out based on the order, uh, online um, digital version and then an audio, like okay. an audio version. So we're gonna try, Do not try, we'll get all three of them kind of put together. So that I'm very excited about. Um, I'm actually launching a TikTok for Sydney Palmer and um actually this afternoon we're doing our first like content like content afternoon but really just kind of asking frequently asked questions i mean answering frequently asked questions in the business brand and um and work, like mindset world um i'm actually excited probably more like after the summer aside from the services i provide right um right in the world of taxes what you don't spend is um, profits and what is profits you pay taxes on, right? So what I want to do is start um, organizing my back end portfolio, whether I'm investing in vending machines, somebody else's food truck or whatever. What I'm excited about this year is to really start doing research on how I can spend my company's profits to create these like residual income sort of assets that just drive like you know, bottom line income, mm, you know? Yeah. So that's the goal. So as I make money, cause I, my business and my investing are separate. I do my investing through a broker dealer and then I do my consulting through my own business. And um, that's another part of, of investing, right? Investing sometimes isn't just on the market. It could be earning five vending machines yes. in the stores down the street and they, yeah. they all bring in, I don't know, okay. I don't know, a thousand a month for me, right? That's four thousand. That's the aim. Passive right? income, right? So, right. So, 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 so I was saying, lead, leading on from that, then. So, so as as an entrepreneur, so what 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 like motivates you? You know, what what wakes you up in the morning? You know, what's what's that fire that's in your belly? You know, what's and maybe what what's your routine? What's your daily routine like? You know, are you one of these guys as part of the five a.m. club? You know, and just just powers through the day, or you know, what, what, yeah, what what gets you going? I'm a very spiritual person in the sense that I believe that God has called me to do certain things. So first and foremost is like that, that understanding of what my calling is. And it took a while for me to understand it. Um, but I believe I'm, first of all, I'm a creative, right? So I'm called to create, right? That's the first thing. And then secondly, my creations are one for the glory of God and two for the benefit of the people that need those or engage with those creations, right? So my motivator is knowing that the longer I take to manifest and put out what God's put inside of me, the longer I'm away from be benefiting those and giving God the ultimate glory with what he's called me to do, right? Um, and that sounds kind of like pie in the sky, but it helps me, man, because sometimes I don't feel like it like straight up and then sometimes i don't do it i'll just i'll cancel the whole day like, say hey it's not it ain't it today you know <laughs> those don't happen too often but they happen and they're okay because you need that too so that's what i would say um that's the motivator and also i don't want to work this hard for much longer lord knows i like i i enjoy the work that i do but life is a gift and mm -hmm. gifts are meant to be enjoyed you see what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. 
we have selective amnesia where we forget how far we've come, you know? And sometimes I'll be down because like something went south. And I got to remind myself, like, it's like that quote people post on social media. Um, three years ago, who you are today was a person that motivated you, yes. you know? Something like that. I probably, you might have to run it back because I think I jacked it up. Jacked up my own quote. But you get the idea. It, it makes point. sense. It makes sense. Yeah. You know, as, a, as an entrepreneur, you have to be able to look back and be like, yo, I came a long way and I knew less three years ago. So I know more now. So technically, I could probably do the progression I did in the last three years and one year now. You know? And yeah. Yeah. The, the last thing I will say, my parents always told me, John Luca, what is the cutoff? Like, what is the deadline? You can't just arbitrarily run into the abyss and saying, I'm gonna get this forever. Like you can, but I guess parents, we don't want you to low key, right? So that was the energy <laughs> they was kind of giving me. And I think that's where like, once again, the, the performance management, like I told myself, if come, come November of this year, I'm still working just as hard and I'm not fully satisfied with my performance, I'm buying a ticket and I'm going somewhere rural for six weeks. I'm gonna take my laptop and I'm gonna reassess everything. And then I'm gonna come back and start what I was next, you know? But, and that's motivating to me because now I know I'm not gonna run into 2024 the same way. I gave myself a get out of jail free card. So I'm motivated to work hard right now because either way, whether it fails or succeeds, I'm rewarding myself with some rural expedition somewhere that I could just live for six weeks and then I'll come back and we'll hit it again. So that may look different for you as an entrepreneur, but you should set these places where you can assess, evaluate and celebrate progress, whether it's the best outcome or worst outcome, just celebrate progress often so you can move and be motivated. So you have some very impressive qualifications. Um, people have asked us, can you invest for us? Can you do this? Can you do that? Um, but you have the SIE, you also have the Series 6 and the Series 6.3. For somebody who's interested in, in getting, you know, achieving those um, qualifications, what is the process and what sort of things helped you to get through them? Sure. Um, well, the process is you have to connect with a company that, um, <clears throat> that is doing investing. Right. That's okay. that's the first thing, because you can get these licenses, but you need to be going to a broker dealer mm -hmm. for a lot of these to kind of you know manage these asset classes um, or just financial assets in general or tools, products, however you want to call it. Um, so that was the first thing, um, how to get into it. Um, it. That's more of a career move. And so I got my start in the finance world through life insurance because I was low hanging fruit. It was one exam. And I was doing that for a while and I was like, this is limiting. I can't just, I can't just, not, but not limiting in, there are people who have lucrative careers and all they do is life insurance, but it was limiting for what I wanted in a financial career. So then I was motivated by the fact, like I'm talking to these clients, they need investment products. So that's where I got it. Um, and what got, you, what got me through it? I yeah. had to shut, I had to shut down the world. <laughs> for a while like mm. um i used to procrastinate a lot but i don't call it procrastinating anymore it's just that's the way i learned um mm. i learned better in very intense shorter moments of just like information overload mm. that's just how my brain functioned better yeah. so studying for these exams i would i would check out for a week i would turn off the lights in my apartment i'll put a projector on the wall I would stand up on a yoga mat with my golf club and I would just watch lecture videos, like back to back practicing my golf swing, right? <laughs> and then once I finished the chapter, I would turn on the lights, I would do the chapter review exam, they did, cause they give us a program, take like a five minute break, lights off, projector, next thing, standing up. And like, I would stand up, I would sit on my stool, you know, I would stand up again, I would just hold my, seven iron just like you know <laughs> yeah. and i say that because it's like i really had to shut the world around me you know everyone doesn't have that ability but um, i was motivated to get the license as fast as possible because i wanted to add it to my finance practice um so yeah i got one question for you um Go for i it. think this is important for viewers as well but you know obviously yeah 
not besides your courses and stuff, you know, you've done a bit of reading. What are your top five books that sort of sculpted your mindset to achieve these sort of uh, success? That's a good question. Um, okay. Put you on the spot, I know, but. Right. Um, so book number one is called Mindset. It talks about is, the fixed and growth mindset. Is that, is that Carol Dweck? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that book is that book is transformational. Um, and second book, um, actually, Think and Grow Rich. I'll be mm -hmm. honest with you, I only read okay. half of the book. That's a good book. That's a good I wrote, book. I read the first half, and I was like, "All right, got it." <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people say even really after you've read it, they have yeah. to go back. Yeah, you know, and... but. It's like that concept you said, knowledge is empowered, the application of it. So I'd rather read half a book and apply it than a whole book and just like forget it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Think and Grow Rich, Mindset. Um, from a creative a creative standpoint, I would say the war, the war of art or the war on art. And it basically talks about how fear plays itself into our lives, so it blocks our creativity and how we procrastinate doing productive non-essential things as a way of dealing with the fear of really doing what we're supposed to be doing All right so it's a really good book um another good book for money business secrets from the bible right it's written by rabbi lapin this is a jewish rabbi who writes about principles of wealth and finance from the old testament and he's jewish so you should probably read it and listen to it because they know how to make money they keep it um and the psychology of money um the book the psychology of money is very powerful um i think one of the pivotal things i learned in there was a concept of understanding the art of making money and keeping money are two different disciplines mm -hmm. you know and the key difference between those who keep it and don't is being able to define what is your value for enough right because once you define your value for enough you kind of create like a barrier against greed right greed is a desire for more with no specific reason enough is my ticket to freedom is this right my ticket to freedom is passive income of four thousand eight hundred dollars a month because that covers all my expenses and a fraction of the things i like doing if i can generate forty eight hundred a month every single month I would never have to work a day in my life. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. This is an example. And if that if that arbitrary number is yours, then that's your ticket to freedom. Mindset, think and grow rich, psychology of money, business secrets from a Bible, and the war in art to kind of help with creative blocks. And I think those books all together, that's a beautiful portfolio of knowledge right there. I just want to congratulate you guys. To be honest, I think this is this is phenomenal. Um, I think what you guys is doing is amazing. I think, you know, um, just, yeah, the effort, the quality of this whole production, you know, the professionalism, the fact that you are taking yourself as seriously as you should and as you are, I think it's, it's beautiful. And, um, and to know that this is like stemming from Bermuda, like that really makes me excited. I think that's really dope. And I'm excited to see like where you guys go. I think one last thing I, I wanted to share was how do people get a hold of you? We do have a, a, a wide variety of people who may want to be clients, who who may want to just need a mentor um, and they like what they heard today. Um, how would someone get a hold of you in, in, in the next few days? Sure. I mean, well, the standard way, um, my website is www.sydneypalmer.co. That's .co. There's a contact page. You put your name what your thoughts are you can send that in um so it comes directly to my emails it's not one of those things where you're going to type it in it's going to go to some person in india right so it, it'll come directly to me um okay. you can reach out to me on instagram as well if you choose to um email is better because it's a little more organized dms can get kind of crazy but yeah. um you know or business business at sydneypalmer.co but i mean the website's the same same thing so Okay. Um, that would be phenomenal. And the last thing I want to leave with you guys, I think the fact that we had that conversation and then now you guys are in talks to be on cable TV. I think it's just like your gift will make room for you. 
right? So don't, don't, don't be cute about it. You know, if you know how you have value, then demand the value to be returned to you so you can scale it. That's what I would say. Like you, but your gift will make room for you. You just literally have to do it. You know. So that's that's where I want to leave with that. I think sometimes we're taught to like kind of be cute or like even the conversation yet. I think it's an end with saying like it's not name dropping. It's just talking about your successes. You know, it's like even I have that 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 mindset sometimes. You know, but your gift will make room for you. So don't be don't apologize for it. Don't be cute. Don't think you're asking too much. If you think it, like what you constantly think about, right on the positive side, right? What you constantly think about, assume that go up, put it that, put that there in you. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So like, act on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. So for me, it's just obviously thank, thank you for being a guest. It's been been, been a great uh, interview. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I definitely like to get you back on the show. Uh, we definitely. Uh, I think we have a lot in common, especially when it comes to mindset and you know how we how, how we look at things for sure. So yeah, I'd really like to get you back on and uh, we'll have a chat. Maybe about it's not all about positive thinking because not everything goes right. But I think one thing I'd like to talk about is maybe the right reaction when something goes wrong. And you know, I think uh, I think that'll be a be a great conversation to have as well. But not like thank you. It's been really really interesting and I, I really enjoyed. Uh, having you here today so thank, thank you absolutely and i just want to echo that as well you know we're very grateful to have you on the show we feel you've brought a lot of value and i'm sure our viewers would appreciate it it's just uh you know really great to see you and your progress you know like i had mentioned off um air you know i remember you as a intern at um you know uh, my job and um just to see where you've gone is really rewarding to see like yeah man good for you thank you thank you and that internship was like was pivotal for me so thank 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 you to to the folks at your company that really like brought me in and took me seriously because that was that was transformation for me so thank you for that you know Guys, what what a great interview. Just really, really enjoyed that. I think it's probably maybe the third or fourth time I've watched it. And every time uh, I take something from it, you know, a bit of a bit of positivity. And you can just see the passion, you know, John Luke has got and you know what 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 he delivers. And I meant what I said. I, I'd love to get him back on the show. Like I say that about every guest, if I'm honest, but <clears throat> uh there's, there's so much to talk to him about, you know, we could really chunk it down, you know, investment, uh, yeah. you know, positive thinking, uh, re- you know, reaction to disappointment, you know, you know, we, we can put all this into, uh, you know, the financial markets or what we do at Signature FX. And he's just, just such an interesting guy, you know, you know, I could just, you know, grab a coffee, grab a beer, and I could probably just sit down with this guy, you know, for hours and just, just talk, you know, about, you know, how to move things forward, you know, uh, from, from marketing, Mm-hmm. Uh, social media, just just everything. He's he's just been a brilliant guest. Yeah, yeah, he has. I think um, I think one of the things that I found um, that spoke to me the most is that everything's important, but not everything is urgent. Um, prioritizing, and then another one was to define how much is enough, and just build off of that. And I think he used the definition: enough is what is your ticket to freedom. What do you need every month? to survive comfortably, um, to, to basically have passive income. And then the other part was if you're greedy, you're looking for more for no specific reason. Yeah. And th- another thing I liked as well was like, no, sometimes you all read, you know, follow entrepreneurs on social media and it's all about, you know, getting up at 5am, you know, working 16 hours a day, sleeping under your desk. What I really liked what he said was sometimes he just takes a day out. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you know, if, if there's too much going on, that's it. You know, he just, just cancels his day and just yeah. has a day to himself. And that's really good advice. You know, that's one way to avoid burnout and, yeah. you know, you, yeah. you know uh, regroup and regather your thoughts. So I, th- I thought that was a really, really good advice. Yeah. Absolutely. And I feel, you know, there's such a multifaceted guy, you know, and for him to give that sort of advice, you know what I mean? It might 
also encourage people who might not feel like oh i don't have these type of credentials or you know what i mean it's a nice booster to see like yo he might have the same struggles as me you know he he learns differently and this is the way how he's overcome his sort of learning um challenges yeah. i guess you could say uh, challenges might be not the right word but you know what i'm trying to say like he he he, he definitely shows like you know it's possible and yeah, and he, for he that, generally you know, really uh, he generated a lot of interest in the chat, didn't he? So that's probably yeah, the chat was going on, going crazy. I've never yeah, seen a chat like that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, we've got people just asking, you know, what's his website? Uh, f- fair play, he did he did drop us the plug, you know, but we're on cable TV, and uh, yes. I'm, I'm super, I am proud of that guy. You know, we I think we've done well there. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it was it was his idea. So when I had when I had reached out to him for the show, um, he said you guys should be on cable TV. That was it, it was kind of his 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 um brainchild and, yeah, and now we're doing it yeah it's really good but yeah. do you know what guys i i think i think it's time to move on to the big games because yeah the, the big, so i think the first big games we had no i didn't participate it was a little bit, bit a little busy at the time mandela you know made me do this one may i say <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I, you know what well, at, so at, at first I, I entered the games and i was uh I just Google top five stocks and I picked Manchester United, obviously, you know, for the for the right reasons. Of course. But then I found myself, so I think it was about a week after the games, I started checking the results, I started bookmarking it. And even even though it's you know like demo trading, it's a bit of fun, but you know, the competitive side of it really comes out. But what I do want to say is big up, congratulations to our main man who represented us, PJ. You, yeah, well done, PJ. Well done. Well done. Yes. Hey, I got, I got to give you, I got to give you credit, P. You, yeah. you did thanks, very well. Thanks. But no, the, you know, the shout out to the winners, you know, yeah. as well. You know, yes. but, um, yeah, the t- so the top ten. Um, we're just going through it now, but uh, I, I just can't get over what the returns were. You know, we had, we had people returning over ten percent within in a month. That's just yeah. unbelievable, yeah. you know. And yeah. you, yourself as well, P. You just couldn't get over it. So you no, know, look, look at Justin Ross. Yeah. You know, what's that like just 21% because Shannon, yeah. who we've had on the show before, 17% yeah. in a month. Yeah. No, yeah. Satish, you know, 14. And then, then there's our boy, PJ. Yes, you know, Satish. And Satish, so, uh, pip, 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 place. But yeah, <laughs> congratulations for you no, guys. Very well. So, yeah. P, come on. What tell us your secrets? What did you do? Um, this time I actually, you know, it was trying to take it serious and um you know not to not to make excuses there was a glitch that had a nice setback but i'm just glad for the recovery um but you know it, it just seems like you know i was monitoring how everyone else were, um was trading and you know just tried to keep up with the pace you know not mm-hmm. to be so uh conservative but i was a bit aggressive which you would see probably in the chart you know i had some swings in my um capital but um yeah man it was a good time and looking forward to next year's one as well yeah no it's good it's good fun and uh yeah so at, at first i like I said mandela i know i haven't got time you know i'm tra- trading with like, the prop firms and stuff but i was actually checking this account more than my actual real account is really enjoying it it's, and then, it's uh, addictive it's yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 good way and like the top three or the top four is like checking their portfolios every day you know i was trying to look what they picked why they picked so for me I just want to thank everyone that took part because it's a really good learning experience. So there were certain stocks that people have picked that I, I never would have heard of or I never would have looked at. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but because of the people that took part, I actually, you know, took a bit of a deep dive in some of these stocks on the weekend. Just trying to like uh, Google the news. I was trying to get a rationale, you know, why they picked it. So so for me, it was just a brilliant you know, learning experience in, in the stocks because that's not something I normally do. So yeah, yeah. brilliant, really, really good. Yeah. I'm glad with the with the turnout as well. We had um, over a hundred people this time, um, and the the average for the game was above one percent, which is I think really good, especially for people just starting out. Um, and then one other thing that I noticed was um, there were sixty nine people who finished in the green, who finished positive. So just just a great um, great event overall. Um, I will say that um, for me personally, um, my son was using this as a learning experience, um, and he has some tough some tough lessons that he's learned. But hopefully next year he can he can do a little bit better. So um, how old is he? He is five. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll let him off this year, but next year he needs to pull his socks up, you know? <laughs> I know. I know. It's, it's early up from here. It's early up from here. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just I, I just wanted to one more time just, just give some credit to um, those who came in the top three. What we're going to try and do is next show, if we can get them on the show and and interview them and and give them their their just their just um respect that'd be brilliant i, I just like yeah. say that like, we just spoke to pj about you know why he picked what he did yeah, yeah. i i'd love to get the top three on and just uh let's talk through it and you know how, how why and why and how they pick these stocks or pick these cryptos brilliant yeah and yeah. like shannon's just he's just he's just consistent isn't yeah. He? He's yeah. 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 And he's always doing yeah. really well yeah, and, uh, he was in he was in first for a while. Um, yeah. He was doing really well, and then Justin. I think Justin had XRP. It looks like XR, XRP was his best pick. But if you look at that chart, his chart just goes from the bottom left to the top right. So, he did, he did so just quickly going on to XRP. So P, what what's been happening with that? It's uh, so I I didn't expect that that move to the upside that we got. I think it went from what was it thirty six cents you know, up to the up to fifty. And it just moved rapidly. I, I know there's like a bit of bit of chat there, a bit of you know, a bit of gossip about the SEC case, but just just didn't expect that that movement so quick. Yeah, it it was nice, nice, and um, you know the all oh, the charts seem to be lining up. I should say the larger time frame charts um, on the monthly. Um, I think we had hit a bottom, and um, you know I think we were sitting off of a maybe like a two year breakout as well. So I think at the moment we're just retracing back and I feel like, you know, it's upside um, for the rest of the year, you know, definitely not financial advice, but you yeah. know, from my experience, um, I feel that this is what the charts are speaking to me saying, you know, we'll hit this uh, support system or diagonal support of probably over, let me just check. There was a five-year support yeah. it's bounced off of so yeah. um yeah I, I i think um we should be seeing something positive in the upcoming months i know we're going to yeah. cover charts probably after the show but just what quickly want to say bitcoin as well so guys it's i don't know it's it's like it's like bubbling at this level isn't it just below 29. we did hit mm -hmm. did hit 29 but it's it just seems to be building pressure and for me, I'm, I'm very bullish on Bitcoin at the moment. I just think if it carries on with that pressure, you know, where it's hitting that uh, that resistance, I just think it's going to burst through soon as well. Yeah. So I'm very yeah. bullish on Bitcoin at the moment. Yeah, I think we can cover that in the after hours for sure. Yeah. Um, but it, it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time. Yeah. <laughs> and and also, it's also the, um, the banks, you know, all of the uncertainty about some of these but that's right that we're, you know yeah. i think that also probably played a factor with people saying you know what let me take my funds or my capital out of this sort of risky asset right now and let's put it at something that's you know hit a two-year low you know and um which is sensible in my opinion yeah um, that's, that's really good I, yeah i forgot about the bank so something that hit the call to me was a uh, signature bank in the usa so i can remember in 2019 i landed in new york and i like walking through manhattan and i seen signature bank and i can remember like to mandela like trying to take a selfie like signature yeah yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's really, really good. yeah not to be confused with signature fx um and yeah. <laughs> talking about signature fx please remember to post sf hashtag sfx in the live chat uh, we have a mint condition one of a kind exclusive um sfx hat that we're going to be giving away so hashtag sfx for this guy um and then also hashtag sfx we're going to be giving away uh all expense paid spa treatment to orchid nail spa so just take a moment um hashtag sfx you don't want to miss out on the giveaway uh pj and i actually went there um we got our toes did and came out looking looking sparkly and uh shiny uh fully buffed Fully buffed, our tears were glowing. Um, and Andrew is actually making his appointment um, for, 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 for Bermuda's uh, number one nail spa. So shout out to Orchid. Yeah, I am due a visit, guys, for, for sure. I know we've probably been saying that for the last two years, but yeah. I've been traveling, traveling a lot recently, so there's no reason why we can't dip into Bermuda soon. So yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah. 
Let's do it. Um, okay, so next up, next up, we have uh, keeping it moving and keeping it grooving. Uh, we talked about the big games, and now I think it's time for the side bet. I think oh, everybody's waiting for that. Yeah. Side bet. Okay, so let's talk about the last side bet. So, PJ, I, th I, I think you couldn't make it, so I took your vote by proxy. And do you know what? We just went, we just went totally... What can I say? It's totally random. Went off it. We didn't pick. We didn't pick nothing to do with finance. We actually picked uh, football. So uh, as you know, support United. You guys support Arsenal, and they were playing that day. And Man Mandela went for Arsenal. I went for United, and the game finished three-two. Yes, it did. Arsenal. Yes, so, it did. Sorry, Pete. Great yeah, game. It was a brilliant game. Really enjoyed it. it. What's the scores now, guys? I think. I think you could be level pegging, or is it? Uh, yes, it is. Let's see, level, level pegging. Peg it's just actually it was the same score as the game. Oh, <laughs> the exact same <laughs> score as the game. I was a uh, United score. PJ yeah. was <laughs> an Arsenal score. So right. So for this month's side bet, here we go. I've been been debating two stocks, and I'm actually going to go. There's some good news out yesterday at uh, European European Star Wars convention. And let's go for Disney, guys. Let's have a look okay. at the Disney. Okay, okay. you want to have a look at the Disney? Oh, yeah. uh, let's see if I can pull it up. Okay, um, we do not know this beforehand. Okay. Yeah, Here we go. All right. That's Bitcoin. Yeah, look at Bit Bitcoin's raised. Uh, oh, let's see. Yeah, Disney. 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 This is all on the fly. Lots of buttons, lots of buttons. All right, so Disney is here okay so right then guys so do you know what i'm just going to go for the nearest price in four weeks i'm not going to say higher i'm not going to say lower uh probably going to give you guys a minute or two quick analysis in your head to look at the candles look at the charts pick your time frame and let's see what you got guys uh Who's gonna go for? Let's put Mandela on the spot. Come on, as he's okay, So, can you can you give me the summary one more time? The the summary. So let's 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 just play closest to the price where we're going to be in four weeks. So we're okay. at ninety nine point nine seven now. Just give us your prediction, guys. Where where do you think the price is going to be? You know, will it be one hundred four? Is it going to be ninety six? Is it going to be the same? And uh, it's going to be the closest to the price wins. Okay, and then the date you said four weeks. So are we saying? Uh, so let's say the, the Friday date? before the next show. Friday before the next show. Okay. Okay. The way we're going, that could be uh, that could be any time. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think Disney. I think Disney's heading higher personally. Um, as the person going first, um, I'm I'm just gonna go with let's say let's say these highs back in October. Uh, let's say. Uh, I'd say one one ten. One ten. Okay, wow, okay. Yeah. That's, that's, uh... Uh, okay. That mm. I I agree it is gonna be higher from where it's at as well. And I was gonna say one oh five, one oh six. Okay. So which one is it? Five or six? Where are you going? Uh to? oh yeah, one one oh five fifty. One oh five right guys, it's not the price is in. Okay. And for me, I agree with you. I think the price is gonna be bullish. Uh yeah, good news come out yesterday. Uh, you know, some re new releases of movies, some new releases of shows, and yes, yeah, seems to have a very you know positive positive outcome on all social media and all influencers at the moment. So I think, yeah, I think Disney probably gonna do well over the next four weeks. Uh, so yeah, let's let's wait and yeah. see, guys. So may the right. may the best guest win. Thank you, thank you. I'm looking forward to to, to what happens with this side bet. Is is Disney? Um... Does Disney have DC Comics? No, so they have Marvel. Right, I knew they had Marvel. I yeah. wasn't sure if they had both. So, of them. Yeah, what? Well, uh, so I think Warner Brothers is with DC. So yeah, uh, Disney has Marvel, uh, Lucasfilm, which is Star Wars, which was yeah. uh, massive news come out yesterday regarding Star Wars new movie, uh, three new movies, uh, some new live action shows. So there's lots going on uh, with Lucasfilm and Disney at the moment. So. Yeah, I think I think, and it, all, it was all received relatively positive yesterday. You, you know, we've always got some people who, you know, negative on it, but yeah, it was it was good news yesterday, and I, I'm looking forward to what they release. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nice. 
I had seen um, a trailer for a new movie, um, but it was with DC. I said, I never heard of that. Um, Blue Beetle? Blue, Blue Beetle, yeah. Yeah, it looks okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah it looks yeah. pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, next up, we have the competition. So in the communities, we are doing um, three different competitions. In the Savvy Investors, it's Tesla over in Onda 210 at the end of the month. We can go through these in the after hours. Crypto group, we have Bitcoin over and under 29K um, at the end of the month. And then for the FX group, it's over and under uh, for pound dollar, one spot 25, the last trading day of the month. Yeah, um, so I haven't looked at the FX yet. Before me, Tesla, I'm going to go under Bitcoin over and I'll look at the FX later on. But uh, yeah, so my, my, my strategy has been is just uh, in the groups, let's see what the majority goes for and just have a lucky guess and go against. And uh, yeah. let's see what happens, yeah. That happens more often than, than not. And it's it's amazing how the contrarian is usually right in most cases. It's, Especially it's, yeah. if you're going against Jim Kramer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's the best indicator I got to the moment. Someone yeah. said in the chat, like, what indicators do you use? And yeah, just just just, just use him. <laughs> You'll be okay. <laughs> That's a wise word. <laughs> Words of wisdom. Um, uh, yeah. Not, is it the Nancy Nancy Pelosi indicator? But uh, I think there is some, somebody on on uh, Twitter. Yeah, been on the insidertrading.com. I can't find it anywhere. So yeah, yeah there is also another website I have it on somewhere in my notes um, that gives all the politicians um, trade in history. And um, okay. you can see what they're in and, and, and what they're selling and whatnot. And it's, that seems to be useful as well. We'll find out, Pete. Um, sh share it in the group to be really good. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I, I wrote it down, you know, sometimes late nights, you're watching something, you might just write it on a notepad, put it on the side, and then, yeah. you know, that becomes my children's coloring book after. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to do a bit of digging. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. Um, words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. Um, I'll go. I'll go first. Words of wisdom. So surround yourself with people who are successfully doing what it is you want to be doing successfully. Um, it's it's great to have a network and to have you guys are incredible to have. Um, and there will be good times and there will definitely be some dark days. And having people around you, call them mentors, call them brethren, call them friends, whatever, um, to help you to get through those days um, really makes a difference. Yeah, so, no, I, I, I second that. You know, uh, I, I read in a book somewhere, basically, you know, if there's, if there's like five successful traders in the room, you know, you're, you're the six, or if there's five, you know, broke bums or alcoholics in the pub, guess what? You're the six, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. I think the same was, you know, birds of a feather, you know, flock together or stick together. And I think mm -hmm. that's true, you know, I think, uh, you know, who, who you associate yourself with, you know, make sure people are on the same mission as you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah. And along yeah. that same topic, don't stop. Just do not stop. Keep going. You're going to take some licks, but keep going. You know, I've, I, I can speak firsthand. I've taken a lot of licks and probably still <laughs> taking licks. But yeah, don't stop. Yeah, and, and for me, and for me, it's trust the process. So uh, we started streaming a 100k prop film challenge this week uh, on our like our live channel, uh, SFX TV. Uh, it's a live channel where we share no trades, and I've been working on back testing, back testing, back testing. We've had really, really good results, and I went live this week with 100k, and guess what? It took three, three hits in a row, three licks in a row. But you've got to trust the process you've got to believe in yourself you know and if you if you have you know, worked hard you back tested you know you've done your journal you know journal your trades and things just just got to trust the process and, and believe in yourself so my words is just just trust the process yeah that's quality that's quality and i forget that sometimes too you know especially when you do have a loss or two yeah you just you just need to stick with it because you'll get through it just yeah. like every other time yeah, but it's this week, so just, just been streaming live. The chat, the trade has gone up like 50% profit. And I'm like, oh, this looks really good for the channel. Yeah. And then it hits a stop loss. And I'm just like, you know, 
Yeah. 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 Do you find do you find like when the stuff that you that you post ends up not working and the stuff that you don't post is just brilliant? Every time. So when I when I share in the groups, when I share on YouTube, stop loss. And then I'll I'll be I'll be quiet, I'll just snoof. I won't say anything. It's just like profit, 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 profit. It's just like damn, I need to be sharing this. Then the minute I share it's stops. Yeah. But just trust the process, you know, believe in yourself, back test, back test, back test, back test, trust the process and just keep going and you know keep learning. That's another thing I'd say. So, you know, just 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 keep an open mind and keep going. Yeah. Very true. Very true. I think um the next segment that we had lined up was probably everybody's favorite segment. It's it's when we talk about charts and this is for the the die hard you know, people that, that really enjoy getting down to the nitty gritty. Um, but actually, no, you, you know what, before we do that, I think we should probably give away the, um, the, the, the hat and then the spa treatment. Let's give that a go. So um, shout out to our sponsor, uh, Orchid Nail Spa for providing a stress relief. Um, not the one you're thinking of. It's uh, all expense paid. Um, spa treatment at Orchid Nail Spa. Um, so without further ado, let's get over to that um, that prize giveaway. Type hashtag SFX in the live chat to be entered. This is your last call. Um, all right, so let's see here, prize giveaway. Okay, ready? Everybody's in? Okay, no more. Oh, let's go. All right, so hashtag SFX and uh, draw there we go good luck to everybody so the first one we're going to give away is this is the hat mint condition exclusive to paul thomas this is for you got your name on it congratulations Yo, congratulations this guy yeah. trolls me this yes. guy trolls me on football this this is the guy so does he, does he? Yeah, he did. he's in the chat. I think he likes you. I think that's what it is. I don't I think, think he really does. likes you. Uh, he's a Liverpool yeah. fan, and he wrote earlier, I got seven reasons to watch. Seven. <laughs> yeah, seven. you know, you know, yeah. So United <laughs> lost. Yeah, United <laughs> lost yeah, to Liverpool, and uh, I got a message. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> yeah, thanks, Paul. Uh, we'll be sending your hat, yeah. Or seven right. slate as well, so yeah, carry on. Okay, so the last prize, this is the Orchid Nail Spot. If you want to be sitting in these chairs, like PJ and I, you better get in hashtag SFX in the live chat. This is the last call, really. Like seriously, last call. Um, okay, let's do another draw. And all right, everybody's got their got their entries in. Okay, here we go. Orchid Nail Spas, our sponsors. All right, let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. You know, you know, if Paul wins, we're gonna. I'll, I'll bring him with me to Bermuda. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave him with you guys. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'm waiting for the comments now in the chat. Yeah, we're gonna go through the comments after after the draw. I think. Um, here we go. Good luck, everyone. All right. And the winner of the all expense paid spa treatment is ball in here ball in here congratulations <laughs> ball in here, ball in here. send us an email uh info at uh signaturefxa.com to claim your prizes congratulations and um thank you for everybody who's watching live i know we have a lot of people um we should probably go through the the um the chat the chats yeah. yeah people have been very patient with us so okay all right so starting off we had um paul thomas talking about looking forward to this um and he has seven reasons to watch you so he yeah, yeah. Well done, yeah. <laughs> um, also shout out to um mr photogenic coming in hot he does our um our theme music for our intro uh, we had some comments from amanda garman um says she's been following us for a while and um hasn't uh opened up a trading account yet but she wants to get into our group so andrew i think you, you responded to her yeah. So anybody who wants to get into our groups and join our communities, um, please just feel free to, to look at the contact info in our um, in our chat, in our details. Um, next up, we had. Oh, this one looks good. Let's see. 
Okay. Uh, next one we had was this one. Uh, what are your biggest weaknesses? What sorts of things are you trying to improve? So I can take the first one here. There are three things that I find are my weaknesses. Um, the first one is um, sometimes getting a little bit too um, impatient. So if um, if I'm let's say I'm going through a losing streak, I keep going. I need to stop and take a break, walk away. The other one is trying to get out at the peak. Um, I sometimes hold a little bit too long. And then the third one, uh, the last one I would say is um, I want to be able to, to, to skew on the big trade. So uh, put more capital to work when I'm right. Because I keep going small, 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 small. Um, the best traders, they know when to go big. You know basically when to go all in. And by right. all in, that could be 50% of your account or 30%. But go bigger when you know that the, the odds are in your favor. Yeah. So for me, it's it's, it's, just, it's just one thing. It's it's patience. Yeah. So uh, in everything I do in life, it's not just trading. I am Mr. Impatient you know, or Mr. Patience. There's no doubt about it. So yeah. So for me, it's definitely patient, uh, waiting for the correct, correct setup before I enter. And sometimes you can over trade, you know, maybe you, you can see a formation or you, you can see a trade that's not really there. But then because you're, you know, your patience or you want to get into the market, you know, your mind you start you start ticking, then you end up buying or selling something you shouldn't. But for me, yeah, patience uh, in, yeah. in everything I do, not just yeah. trade. Yeah. What about I, you, P? I agree. Um, and just echoing with both of you guys, you know, patience is definitely something and over trading has been an issue for me as well. You know, you might have a nice hit. And then you should, you know, dash your hands and say, you know, that's it for today. But then you're looking for more. You're looking for more. You want to make you yeah. know, double what you just made. And I think sometimes that, you know, is really dangerous for your account. And I've learned an account by not knowing when to stop. You know, um, you're up. You know, let's say if you're up a few thousand or whatever, and then you know you kind of want to try to find the next thousands and you know you, you look for a trade that is really not following all of your rules and you know you're trying to bend your rules just to get that sort of um extra profit and it, it doesn't work out so have your rules test your rules um and and stick to it you know yeah. it's okay yeah. to not trade for that particular or take that particular trade you know yeah i agree so very good advice very good advice um okay next up we have uh okay uh we had a, another comment from rose marie she was saying great tips when we were talking to john luca so another shout out and salute salute to john luca um i enjoyed i enjoyed the interview and we had we had a lot of fun with him um and I saw Andrew saying um, that you're going to hire him as your trading coach. Um, yeah, so w w Wendy's fired, you know. So if you know Wendy <laughs> always is, yeah, if you know, you know. Yeah, so yeah. Luca definitely. He's a, yeah, he's he's just a great all rounder in what he does, and he, you know, he's a good performance coach. You know, he's a good good financial advisor. He, he's just, yeah, he's just a good guy. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, uh, as Ro Robinson saying that this guy is dope, I think he was probably talking about PJ's performance in the big games. Um, <laughs> oh my hat, <laughs> clean up shop. Could be your hat too. Could be a hat, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, shout out to Jerry Soltis. Jerry's in. He's in the um, options groups, um, and he he posts quite a few big trades. His his trades are consistent. He does the SPX zero DTE um, yes. trades. So yeah, he's 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 a great guy. Um, Carlson, shout out to you, fam. Uh, big up yourself. And yeah, anybody who wants to to reach out to John Luca as a life coach. Please, please go right ahead and do that. Um, tips coming out from, great tips coming from Eric. And um, I think a lot of people can take different things from it. It wasn't just one thing. It wasn't just mindset. Yeah. So everybody can kind of take take what they want. Um, Ezra Robinson says, I'm new to trading and want to know what technical indicators you would suggest to a beginner. There's a lot um, out there. Face covering eyes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so what technical indicators would you guys suggest? So, for, so for me, I think a reply to this, it's, it's what works for you. There's no, there's no silver bullet or there's no one hat fits all in trading. So like Mandela, you know, you're, you're into your fibs and you, and you know, your fibs and I've tried it. it doesn't really work for me. 
So me, you know, I, I, I like to trade levels. I like to trade, you know, from one level to another. I like to tr and I like to trade breakouts. So for me, uh, support resistance and maybe a MACD. Whereas, yeah. you know, Mandela, you know, I know you use you know, Fibonacci, you know, a lot. But for me, I, yeah, so it's 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 what works for you. You need to find your own tra trading style. But for anyone watching the show, you need to go to Baby Pips first. You need yeah. to complete it. Then once you complete it, then reach out to us and we, we can have a chat and, you know, look, look at your style of trading for sure. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. And I think one of the other things um, sometimes people get hung up on thinking it's just like one indicator you know or, or a few indicators that it's like the golden fit but i think if you understand a few things candlestick charting um uh chart patterns yeah and some mix that in with some of your technical indicators of choice whether it be the rsi you still rsi um macd um you know it's, it's, it's things like bollinger bands sometimes these things um you know they all work together to create the picture that you're looking for and that's that's what you kind of need to um just figure out you know um like i said it's not a one size fit all you see these situations happening and then you just adapt with it you know yeah what i, what I would say was be, be careful with too many indicators i'd say keep it simple so some traders have come to me and they've sent me a screenshot of their chart they got so many indicators i have to reply back like like uh, you know where, where's the price i can't see the price Jeremy. Right. You've, got, you've got about 20 indicators on a chart and it's like right. like what are you looking at you're just going to confuse yourself so yeah. like say you know one size doesn't fit all just have a look at what works for you and you know there's plenty of free material out on youtube you know you can go back on some of our old videos where the three of us have looked at a chart and we've you know we've analyzed the price using like a different indicator a different method but we've all come up to the same conclusion and, and yeah. that's what it's about it's about what works for you uh what i will say about indicators on mt4 and trading view they are lagging indicators so those indicators signal when the price has made its move normally so that's one thing i will say so you know if you've got a moving average when it crosses the price has already made its move and it's the same uh, uh you know rsi people you know you, you people say it's overbought or oversold that's not the case rsi means relative strength so that means you know the price is strong or the price is weak yeah so but again we, we can we can talk about all this being taught you know wouldn't be a bad idea we do a show one day we we go through the indicators and what they do yeah. but the majority of indicators are lagging and that's what that's what people need to realize yeah that's a very good point too i think um i echo what you guys shared some great questions. Um, we got some shout outs here in the chat as well. Great interview. Um, so we'll bring him back on for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, Paul Thomas is um, saying Essex boy, uh, are we going mainstream bringing on some good, some good um, guests? Uh, Caleb Alexis, shout out to Caleb. Um, his website is uh, sydneypalmer.co. And I think we had, I think we put it in the uh, description as well um but let me see if i can pull it up real quick i think it's sydneypalmer.co uh, yeah. for anybody who wants to reach out to to john luca there it is uh yeah so it's business at sydneypalmer.co and then the website is sydneypalmer.co if anybody wanted to reach out to him um just a few more comments because i know people have taken their fridays to spend time with us and we do we do really appreciate it especially my wife always an informative show guys well done um love you babe. thank you um and um yeah the only other intro to to the show that i like better was was uh, my wife's um so my son's uh, <laughs> intro was my favorite and then my wife's was my second favorite very close second favorite no Arthur, we, we, we me and pj we don't choose what first we thought uh he was being replaced but we're not i just thought, I just got a feeling now you're, you're planning to work from home and make your wife and son do the hard work for you. <laughs> I want you. I want you. Yeah. You know my yeah. tricks. You know yeah. my tricks. Oh, I thought man. Eli did very well too. I liked his confidence and his smile was thought, always. I just thought it was brilliant. Yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, excellent. Yeah. And just so anybody who doesn't watch the show, um, Andrew and PJ never know what the, the first segment's going to be. And I want to keep it that way because your reactions are, are priceless. <laughs> all right um a couple more couple more um thanks again to everybody who's sticking with us through the after hours um 
Um, Eric has said, really enjoyed the discussion, especially with John Luca explaining his journey into personal finance. I think everybody can relate to that. Oh, Denise Darling, let's give a shout out to Denise. I work with Denise. So shout out to Denise and her whole entire family, her mother. Um, she's, she's one of my favorite colleagues. So is, so is Eric. So thank you, Denise. Thank you. I see you. <laughs> Um, so ball in air, ball in air, who won the spa treatment says up fellas. Good stuff. Keep up the great research and TA. So we will continue to do that as well. Um, great information and wise words coming from Patrick Hayward. So big up Patrick. I know Patrick was, he's looking to get into trading. He has long-term stuff. Yeah. Um, and he's in all of our groups, but he wants to get into more short-term things. Right. So I know, I know it will happen. Um, and just so people know for next time, it's, it's hashtag SFX. So hashtag SFX is actually um, uh, the hashtag symbol. So it'll be something he, similar that to this. I'm, I'm sure. You think it was done, it was done twice. It was done, it was I, done I think, twice. I think, no, I think I knew who that was. Just, okay, okay. It's a different person, if it's that person. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, oh, I think I know who you're talking about as well. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so we Stu. <laughs> um appreciate you Stu. thank you for for um watching the show yeah, Stu's in all our groups too yeah. Stu's in the fx group yeah he's really um, yeah so i yeah. follow some of his trades Re really good really good information good analysis so thanks Stu. brilliant yeah yeah so keep it up um and then so goat um Stu says that i'm the goat and then ball in there ball in there says no messi is the goat sfx are the real goats <laughs> I think I think um yeah, so Baltimore, you, Baltimore needs a spa treatment. Yeah. So <laughs> what, what you saying is Messi's the greatest of all time and, and we are like real goats. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay, no. Got you, got you, got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thanks, mate. Yeah. Um so Gerhard has a question. Do you have an episode on zero DTE trading, i.e. risk indicator strategies? So what we could do after this, after we finish this, if you guys have another five minutes. We can pull up some charts. Yeah. Sure. Um, and if anybody wants to stay on, we can we can do that. Um, Caleb loves Disney, so that was a good call. Um, Caleb, I don't know. I think what was what were the rules for? What was the rules for a side bet? Is it up to ten or something? Closest to the price. Uh, closest to the price. Okay. On the Friday, Friday close for the next show. Okay. All right. So I yeah, will be watching that closely. Um, thanks, Mandela. Uh, that's from Denise. Yeah. Thanks, Denise. <laughs> enjoy your vacation denise was off on vacation on thursday and she's off on a vacation on monday giving her business out to the whole youtube community but enjoy your vacation and tell your mom i said hi um Stu also says cheers guys so yeah just i think we can go into some charts now i think we go into some charts um what do you guys want to have a look at what are you thinking so guys i'm a little bit uh so i'm following tesla lately so i wouldn't mind look at tesla and I haven't right, so have a look at uh, I've just, just following the news, just been following the fundamentals. So I haven't looked at the charts at all yet. So it'd be, it'd be, be good to have a look at it. Yeah. So we have Tesla's in our savvy community as yeah. the, um, the competition for this month. And it's whether or not it, it's above or below 210. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying this new strategy called, um, it's called box trading. And All I right. could put the, a link in the description. Yeah. So yeah. basically, it's, it's like a, a consolidation area or range or whatever, but you just draw a box instead of lines. Yeah. So, so that's, yeah. I assume that's what I do. So we, uh, we look at the consolidation in the box. And then we look yeah. for a breakout one way or the other to the upside to the downside. Exactly. So, yeah. That's exactly yeah. what it is. We, we can so talk about that. That's, that's how I trade. So is it like uh, the concept is similar to like supply, supply and demand? Uh, trading or yes that's exactly what it is it's just using a different label yeah, yeah. it's the same theory behind it so you'll get the um the supply down here and then the demand up here yeah um and so anyway yeah we we, we said we'll look at um tesla 210 is what we're looking for in the savvy group do you guys think it's going to be a bubble below at the end of the month uh below for me i below? i, I echo that i i think okay. that um you know, I've done a bit of a fib chart on there, and um, I think that it might be looking to. It's 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 looking like it might hit that one fifty. One fifty. So you mean it's gonna go down? You think it's gonna pull I, back? Um. Well, let's say at the 
Minimum what like 164. 164. 164. I think okay. I think it's had a vector okay. in their time. In their future. Okay. I could be wrong and I'll be glad if I am, but yeah. I think no. that it's I, I'm it's with you. see some uh just looking at it, I see some lower highs, higher lows, whatever you want to call them. Also, I see a gap that needs to be filled below the fib level. This one here? Yeah, it's not yeah, it yet. Yet. so uh yeah, it's possible. ADX yeah. and DI is looking like it might cross over for the downside as well, but it's a bit of indecision there still. But uh, yeah, I, I think yeah, I, I think it'll be safe to say that it's probably gonna drop back down a bit. Well, that 61, 61 8 fib level is strong support, very strong support. It is. It is. That's at 65, 165. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we could we could we could be looking at touching that level before we get another move to the upside. But if I was to trade, I'd be I'd be looking to go short at the moment. Yeah. It, I think but, if it would have broke through and that 200, um, well, when was it? Like last week sometime, I think that it would have probably been like a inverse, uh, what's it? I'm going blank real quick. Um, inverted. Inverse yeah, inverse had his shoulders. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say, but thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it would have been, you know, more so on the upside if it would have broke through then but it didn't so mm -hmm. i think it might be a, a, a failed one and looking to go down retest yeah. that obviously. so if if you guys are both agreeing i'm going to take the contrarian view um just because the three of us agreeing is not a good sign so i'll say i think we're gonna by the end of the month i think we may get a bounce off of this box yeah. um and then even if we break through here i think that we still we still could bounce off of this and, and we, we, we have a nice little rally. Um, yeah. One thing to add, they do have earnings in two weeks. Um, so uh, I think it's it's um, something that should be, I guess, factored in is Tesla earnings. Um, I have the date somewhere, but yeah, it's in, in about two weeks time. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised that the box you drew where I said the gap's gonna fill, I wouldn't be surprised if it's just filled with a long, long wick before we see a move yeah. to the upside. So we, yeah. uh, you could see a false breakout below the 61.8. Yeah, yeah, that fib level, you could see a a fake break out there we just fill that up with a, a long wick and then we continue with journey to the upside but for me yeah if i used to take if i used to take a trade now I, i'd probably go probably go short but then listen we just we just guessed the meeting right now me we're looking at his chart yeah. and we're not, we're not running it properly but yeah yeah we're just doing it on the fly um but i do think it's 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 very topical and hopefully it helps some people in the savvy community um do you want to have a look at the bitcoin itself i know we have that one for the crypto yeah. group so yeah so for me bitcoin is just building so much momentum so much pressure look at that the box there uh yeah it's just it's just tapping that like the 28 date or the 29 level and it's it it's going to be fundamental it's going to be fundamental now the pushes are through you know it's, it's not uh yeah so for me I'm, I'm definitely bullish on bitcoin at the moment i can just see a big push through that uh that uh resistance level and then we probably get a pullback on Twitter and then on, on to the next move to the upside. So for me, I'm yeah, I'm very bullish on Bitcoin and yeah, it's probably gonna crash now, but uh yeah. <laughs> Be careful what you say. Oh, so I, I think I think if we yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um I, I I so I have a buy from down here, I'm holding it. I do think it's it's worth having a little bit of insurance. Yeah, I think we could easily we could easily see the bottom of this box if we zoom in um we've been going back and forth back and forth so it's not it's not impossible to at least get back down to like 27 uh, at yeah. the very least you know if you, if you look at that consolidation you could, could draw a box within a box yeah yeah, so yeah you could yeah you could uh like you want to put one in pulling support around 28 yeah around there yeah around here so something like yeah. that that's right yeah so yeah so for me yeah it's uh it, it's it's looking bullish i think uh quite quite positive yeah. at the moment what what are you thinking p what are you thinking i, I can see you over there um the, no, the, the wheels are grinding no no so i i had zoomed out i mean i'm not sure what time frame you guys are really sort of like predicting you know your bullishness or whatever if it's just a four hour then yeah i i agree um but if i'm i'm looking like you know long term throughout the next couple of months i do see some uh bullish bullishness um if only monthly it looks like a macd crossover is on its way um mm -hmm. uh, i feel like 
take it down to like maybe a week. You know, it's it's the RSI and everything's showing some strength. We've, we've broken out um, from a, what, maybe almost a year, maybe maybe 18 months downtrend. So I, I think that, yeah, it was definitely looking bullish for the upcoming months. Yeah, so look, look at that. It's, yeah, that's just... That's nice, you know. It's, it's, yeah. it's a great entry yeah, point, that's right? Beautiful, yeah, beautiful, that's beautiful, 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 beautiful. So if we to talk that weekly candle, there's such such a move to the upside. That's such a show mm -hmm. show, show of strength, uh, mm -hmm. confidence within the buyers. And we were talking off air about uh, those two banks in the USA, and that's had a big impact on crypto and gold. Yeah, you know, we've yeah. seen a big pump yeah. in gold as well. And I just think there's a lot of uncertainty at the moment. There's, there's so much going on in in the US. And uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, China, India, uh, who else is it? I think there's a few other countries about actually replacing the dollar uh, yes. you know, with, with the yen and stuff. So if we get that uncertainty in the markets, people will move their money. First of all, old money will go into gold, into a physical asset. And then, you know, as, as younger entrepreneurs will you know, probably put it into crypto. So I do see, I see money moving. And yeah, Bitcoin is... is it's looking really good and it's about time as well yes we you know yeah. as as crypto hodlers you know we've uh we've, <laughs> we've had it tough over the last couple of years and we so uh yeah, yeah let's go. you've been very very patient very yeah. like patient is a is an understatement i think yeah um, and, and when you look at the correlation between um crypto and the dxy um it oftentimes goes and in, in in an inverse sort of uh relationship so now that the dxy is looking to sort of drop i think that might be an indicator that crypto might be on the up and up yeah yeah might be. yeah um one other thing i just wanted to mention um the last show was on january 22nd so that was 76 days to go 76 days ago almost two and a half months bitcoin was around 20 I think 23 or so, sorry, 20,000 around that time. Um, and we were very bullish. We were very bullish around here. Um, and since that point, um, I think we've been proven to be to be right. Um, so interested to see how the, the next show where we're at in Bitcoin, um, yeah. like, like we were saying, I think there's a lot of bullish um, sentiment out there. But who knows, maybe we're above 30K. Yeah, we need, we, need, we need to open and close above like the 29 and if we do that that's a, that's a level that, that you know I, I talk about levels and quarters theory that's my thing and yeah. bitcoin and gold you know they work on these uh quarters theories levels that's that's how they move so yeah if we open if we can close and open above 29k um, yeah let, let's go yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and just good. observing the chart you know you see once i find i look i like to look for as far as entries i'm um, looking at those small uh candle bodies and once you start seeing them get smaller and smaller you know it's mm -hmm. it's not many buyers or or it's not much of a range right yeah, yeah. Which very, I feel tight. very tight very, very, very tight, tight right so yeah. when you start seeing those sort of ranges that's uh indication that there's probably going to be some sort of burst in whatever direction it's not an indication of it being bullish or, or bearish but something's about to happen so these are the days you want to accumulate and use other indicators and other sort of uh, background information to make a decision on what direction you're going you know? yeah yeah uh, we did get a question about indicators and and one thing i'm i'm watching closely is the june 2021 support that's yeah. just just on the 29k i think andrew you said yeah you, that, that's your line in the sand and pj you said you're looking at 30k so if we go back to um june of 2021 we were bouncing off of this this is the same level here it's the same, exact same 29 just around 29k that was support uh, when we came off the, the previous all-time highs in 2021 we hit 29 and then we shot back up for 60. yeah so i think that has been resistance up until now and if we can break above this previous support i think it's game on guys yeah, yeah. so then let me just you just follow the levels and so with like bitcoin gold you know so we, we just look at those fib levels you know okay we're on a weekly chart so you're gonna need a lot of patience uh, there'll be a lot of movement within the four hours and the days.
but yeah if we break that we should be looking then at you know the 36k mark that should be your next next target of going long and you know just drop just dropping your stop loss and under the 28 dates 28 7 maybe for a stop out but yeah. uh yeah it's, it's here. yeah just just you're having 36 a, you're saying 36 36 as a as a target just or? having I'm, a second glance at it yeah it's on the, on the weekly time frame if we were to you know comfortably break through that 2021 support i'd be looking yes. uh, if we open above that i'd be looking to buy go long and i'd be looking to drop my stock just under that uh, that support level yeah. and i'd be looking to take profit then just below that 50 percent fib level for me but mm -hmm. that takes some patience on a weekly chart you know you're going to be pulling your hair out if, you know if, uh, with the ups and downs but yeah for sure you know for sure I'm, I'm very positive in bitcoin yeah um okay we got a question about spx so i'm gonna i'm gonna try just, and do a quick deep dive on it okay oh, yeah, sorry go p go for it pj no, I was just going back on um, Bitcoin real quick. Um, okay. You can pull up your Bitcoin chart. So, yeah. you know, just to give a full picture, because it doesn't always go straight up. It doesn't always hit these resistances and then continue to run. So, like, looking at it and looking at the history of it as well, sometimes after a peak, which was, you know, in October so of, of 2021, you know, we, we have our downward trend. It seems like we've established a bottom at close to, what, 16,000 or so. So I'm just trying to lay out all scenarios where I feel like that June 21 support could be uh, current resistance. And we could potentially be uh, just hovering, accumulating for a longer time period. Yeah. Given the, the uh, you know, how long Bitcoin's been around, we're not going to see those spikes peaks and valleys in a shorter time frame as we did in its earlier stages, right? It's a lot more money that's needed to sort of move it up and down. So just trying to lay out those scenarios. If it doesn't break through that June 21 support, then I could see a couple of more months of it ranging, you know? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, I, I agree with you as well. And it'll, I'm interested to see um, next show how, how we've progressed or where we are, what, what price we're at. Um, in Bitcoin. Um, really quickly, I was just going to do um, SPX. So um, just from our weekly, um, we hit the highs in December 2021. Then we hit uh, a low in September 2022. And we've kind of been moving our way up. We were in this channel um, from what people, some people call the 2022 channel. Uh, we got a break through it um, in January. We came back down and we tested it. This was the the, the, the banking issue in the US. Um, this was a recent sort of crash calls and we've sprung right off of it. I don't know if, can you guys see it? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So we hit the channel again. So it was resistance and that resistance has been broken. We tested it again and it's almost become support. Yeah. Um, so if we zoom into this area, I just want to show you kind of how I'm looking at SPX. Um, Fibonacci saying we could get up to 4,300 on SPX. Um, so that could be a good target. But before we get there, we have to break about 41 um, to, to, to get to that point. So from a, from a, this is a zero DTE SPX. What, what do I look at? Um, not financial advice. Um, so I, I drew a, a box. This was, I'll, I'll go through the trade on Thursday. Um, so I drew a box here. I knew that this could be a target in the near term ish. So I wanted to be buying calls. And then when you're looking at the entry points and, and things like that, there are two main things that I try and look at. The first one is a gap. So you can see there was a bit of a gap on uh, Thursday at the open. Um, so this would have been Wednesday night, Thursday open. We, we moved down. And I try not to trade until I see some sort of support coming in. We got a support at around a, a support candle, bullish candle looking at uh, 1045 in the morning and that's when i pulled the trigger i bought a call i bought the uh 40 75s and the 40 80s um so two calls that were basically if i draw a line somewhere around here so that call and then this call and they're around just under uh ten dollars i think roughly then we got to move up we came back down so my thinking is we got to close this gap this is this is the theory uh when you have a gap like this you're either going to close it or you're going to ignore it and in this case, I was thinking we need to, we definitely need to close it. And I wanted to play to close it. So it teased a little bit. 
closed half of it, came back down just to test to make sure that you're really serious and you're not, you, you know, you're not just a, a newbie that's going to get their face ripped off. If you would have been patient, this is a higher low than this. And then we got a nice springboard in the midday. So this came up to around lunchtime. Um, and that's where I got out. So got in the calls here, got out of the calls here. Um, and that's what I look at. The gap was closed. So if this is the gap, we were outside the gap and we went through the gap. Yeah. Um, the second thing is um, basically just being, being able to have risk uh, parameters. So not going all in, not, um, I'm always having a stop loss, not just uh, expecting that the price will go in your favor. These are the other things that kind of work in the, in the background. Um, but we had a question in the comments about SPX zero DTE. This is how I look at it. This is a simple closing the gap. Um, yes. and in the end, it ended up being more than a hundred percent, um, good on analysis. trade. Yeah. So for me, uh, when I, back in the day, when I, my learned traders told majority of the time that the gaps will fill and just want to quickly go back to get that's comment about how we're going to see a breakout without volume. So on Bitcoin, I'm seeing uh, fundamentals. I'm not a news trader. I uh, don't really follow the news, but I'm ex normally the charts can give you a clue to what's coming. And I'm expecting some sort of fundamental to be announced maybe in the next week or two that's going to push the price up of Bitcoin. So that the, the volume will come from the fundamentals, whether it be bad, bad news from the US, bad news for the dollar, where people move their money uh, into Bitcoin and gold. Yeah. So Gerhard, Gerhard's question, I'm going to just post it in the, in the, um, good question, really good question. it is a really good question. Um, and I don't know if he was, if he was talking about SPX or if he's talking about Bitcoin, Ger Gerhard, if you're still on, can you clarify? Um, I'm just not sure. Yeah, uh, but, but yeah, I think, I think you're right. But, yeah. but for me, the, the, it's, you know, it's, it's not like, it's not like magic. It's not like, you know, uh, you know, telling the, telling the future or something, the charts give you an indication of what's coming in a week or two. And for me, looking at our weekly chart on Bitcoin, uh, I, I got. I think we will see some fundamental news that's going to push that price up. So yeah, uh, yeah we will we'll clip that. Let's, let's see what happens. Yeah. All right. Um, I do want to say, uh, Mr. Fotogenic was in the live chat. Mandela, let me borrow a hundred a thousand dollars until things get better. <laughs> so <laughs> we got to get him on the show too. We got to yeah. get Mr. Fotogenic. You have to come on this. You will be on this show. Um, he's the, yeah, he's, he's our next guest. If, if I have anything to say about it. Um, so I think, uh, yes, he was talking about Bitcoin. There you go. Yeah, you're right. So yeah, let's, let's see how Bitcoin plays out and let's see what fundamental news comes in the next week or two. But I think we will get volume from that. I think, uh, but bad news, well, for the dollar, something will push that price up. I'm pretty sure if, or good news for the dollar. We could see the price get pushed down, but we will see. It just just to echo that um if he looks at the money flow index it is on the uptrend for bitcoin on the weekly chart as well so you know when you when you mentioned about volume and a breakout you know money flow is almost like the uh water to the garden for for your asset right so if you have an asset and and all the other indicators are looking like it's going to uh you know, be or bullish or bearish, you could see the money flow index to see if it's, you know, funds going into the project or asset um, to keep that price going where it needs to go. Yeah, that's a very good point, too. And I, I actually don't use that enough, PJ. So thank you for highlighting that. Um, yeah, if you share that in the groups, that'd be great as well. Uh, I don't use it, use it that much myself. So it'd be really good. Yeah. All right, no worries. Okay, two more charts that I like to I like to um, mention. One is gold. Um, I think we all have have our, our eyes on gold. It's been ripping higher, um, and of course, I got a box for that too. Um, Andrew, PJ, any thoughts on gold? Have you guys been watching it recently? Um, Three thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, been taking a couple of trades myself. Uh, been going long on gold actually. Uh, I see the majority of traders going short and I don't really understand why. It's like I said earlier in the show, you know, we're, we're not getting the best news from the US at the moment, are we? You know, there's not, it's not secure. Uh, the dollar, there's like, uh, you know, we've had two banks more or less go under or, or go out of business. We've got other countries now moving away from the dollar. It, it's not great. And investors, institutes, they're going to take their money out of the dollar and they're going to put it into 
like I said, old money in, into physical assets, you know, gold, silver, etc. And then you've got the new money then, like the, you know, the crypto boys, and that's where they're going to move their money. So you know, that, that's what I've been seeing. So yeah, I've taken a couple of trades uh, long on gold, and yeah, we, we've been okay, you know, t- just doing some day trading. So yeah i think that, that that you bring up a good point andrew is the time frame so you're i think you like to do especially for gold you like to do kind of one day or a few hours um but what about you p have you been keeping an eye on it or ha- um have you had a look at yeah it? again sometimes i like to get a scope of the asset group by just looking at a really large time frame like the monthly you know you yeah. definitely wouldn't want to use it if you're trying to do day trading but just to see what the um you know, general trend, as, as you know, the trend is your friend. Um, and I feel like with gold, we're definitely on the upside. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I agree. I agree. Where, where it's going to go, um, I guess it all depends on the severity and the, uh, the, the, the the amount of fear that gets pushed out to, you know, I think often news is used as a catalyst for people's behavior to buy or sell an asset group. And I feel like you know gold and silver are things that um people are gonna flock to for sure yeah i think i think we're gonna get the the good old-fashioned uh bermuda sea turtle formation um i don't know if you guys remember this one but where you just get a little bit of a peak above uh just above the old time or their local high and then after the, the peak comes in we go down for a little bit um i do think it's run up a lot a lot a lot a lot um mm-hmm. i don't think it would be a shock if we moved down another hundred um, yeah. hundred points from here. I think that's healthy. Uh, Fibonacci is saying around um, 1,970 would be, I think, a reasonable support. But um, we got in long um, back in December and holding on to that, I think eventually you guys are right. I, I just don't know if we shoot up this week or, or this month. Oh, it's... Um, that's, that's the question, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I did put a short in um, on, uh, and not financial advice, obviously, but because we were so extended, um, I still have the long position in one hand, and then I got the short just in case as, a, as an insurance, um, just above 2020, I believe. Um, so if we do move down a little bit, this was a short, if we do move down a little bit, then this is kind of making a little bit of uh, an insurance um, profits. I do think we could get back into the box which we had been before um, and we can chill out in the box for a little while um, and then I'll be looking to exit this short towards the the supply zone or the the bottom of the box where we had these um, sort of upward moves or, or where the, the bulls have come in and, and bought buyers have come in and bought previously so short term I think we head down a little bit yes. um, and then long term exactly but ultimately I think the next thousand dollars and I'm talking about like three thousand dollar gold is 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 going to happen this year, um, whether it happens before the summer or after the summer. Uh, I think we're ready to to, to strap our seatbelts on and go for the ride. Mm-hmm. That's it. Very long. My, my my perspective is is long term in 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 the long position. Um, and then last one that I had was oil. I know you guys looked at oil as well. We had a big gap up after OPEC came out with um, their cut. They cut, um, I think they cut like one mil- over 1 million barrels. On Sunday, they announced OPEC Plus that they're gonna cut the production of oil and we got a huge 8% move higher. This week, we've been just kind of coasting in here. But like we were saying earlier, we haven't closed the gap. This so, gap yeah. hasn't been closed. So what are you guys thinking? So I take, I would take, I would probably take a calculated short position on that and just- Absolutely. And just just get my stop loss, you know, above that uh, resistance level for sure. Uh, yeah, absolutely, no. yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I I haven't I haven't looked at oil to be honest. I do follow the oil reserves uh, by country, but uh, just looking at this chart now is this is a nice short opportunity there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. If if we zoom out a little bit, we can see like some channels as well. Um, so this is on a daily. We were hitting in between these. I drew these like rough lines. Yeah. So we've just broken above this would have been the resistance from say back in July of last year. So if we can eventually, I think similar to Gould, eventually we do move up and, and once we break 82 or 83, 
yeah i think i think we have a good ways to go higher in in oil personally i think we get a pull back close that gap first before we go to the upside yeah, yeah very possible very possible that's a huge gap yeah. right we we went from the middle of the box to the top of the box oh yeah first third of the box so yeah um that's the power of news we talk about news yeah. quite a lot um yeah that's it from me guys did you guys have any any charts anything no that's it for myself just uh next week us 30 for myself uh just follow us live on sfx tv we're uh, doing the 100k top firm challenge and it's not going to plan at the moment so yeah <laughs> it's no it's, it's worth a follow you know uh, everything's transparent it's live on there and um, we're taking uh trades on a us 30 on 15 minute time frame but i'm probably going to jump in on oil short uh, on the open uh okay. Uh, after the holidays for sure i'm definitely going to take that trade uh, and i'm actually going to take that on the prop film challenge as well as well i'll post that on our, our other channel so sfx tv uh basically is it's rough it's unedited uh it's just live trading uh we post the coming uh forex or trading news and any interviews you know if anything comes up that we think is of interest uh, we'll just live stream onto that channel if you guys want to tune in you know be appreciated if you can su subscribe like and support and uh that'd be good no yeah. no you're doing phenomenal on there and um i think the more you're doing it the more i'm liking it so keep it up man yeah it's yeah. just just being transparent of what i'm doing so you know I, I i take trades every day but now i'm just live streaming them and somebody did drop me a really nice whatsapp message saying uh you know appreciate what you're doing uh being transparent you know it takes actually said you know, it takes a bit of guts to do it because mm -hmm. if you're wrong you know the whole world can see it and if you're right the whole world can see it and uh yes yeah, so i appreciated some of the support i got you know from from, from doing that channel yeah yeah well done i i think it's important to see you know even if you are wrong man you know i think too often a lot of people especially online any post events and it's a unrealistic sort of viewpoint or perspective because everyone takes losses you know what i mean you can't be right so, all the time so listen anyone has got a hundred percent win formula they're, they're lying <laughs> so yeah my so my, my trade strategy has got a return of three to one so I'm, I'm confident i can lose i can lose three trades in a row and then you know if i hit the third to win that or if i can hit so and that's what it's about you know uh no no trader is 100 and if they are you know i, I, I would challenge them and I'd be interested to see the trading history, you know, verified accounts, etc. So, but yeah, no, it's, it's worth following us, and you know, we either we either going to win or we're going to learn. You know, there's, there's, there's no other option with signature FX. Yep, that's it, and that's what we're here, we're here to do. I think, I mean, the three of us we started from humble beginnings, and we've learned a lot, even just about YouTube and the show. I think is growing. So, I just wanted to say, you know, salute you guys. Shout out to you guys. You know, yes. let's just keep growing. Let's just keep doing it. Um, I'm enjoying it, and and I think uh, from our comments in 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 the the live chat tonight, um, I think a lot of people are are enjoying it as well. So, um, one a few small things just to finish up. So, just one last thank you to John Luca um, for, for for being our special guest. Please reach out to him um, if you are interested in, in engaging his services or, or just having a conversation with him. Also, um, thank you to our sponsors. Uh, we have for our swag, for our hats, unfortunately not, um, not Andrew's hat that he's wearing at the moment. Probably um, <laughs> one of these, you know, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a great hat. It, it, it looks like something that you would wear to like a, like a nice dinner party or something. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like a traditional uh, hat from uh, Latam from uh, Colombia and Venezuela. Or Ven Venezuela. Yeah, I, like I like it. I like so, it. I like it a lot. So I picked uh, one in Latin America a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Got, yeah. Give me nice. Yeah. I think Caliente. we should probably get <laughs> Caliente. <laughs> Come in hot. <laughs> um, we should get we should get our sponsor. Our sponsors for the swag is just for kicks. And what, what I'm going to do when we place our next order from Just For Kicks, I'll ask them to do up a hat like the one you have. Um, but yeah, people, please contact them, email them if you have any any requests for, for those sorts of things. And then also Billionaire Billionaire is desperately in need for a spa treatment. So shout out to Orchid Nail Spa uh, for being our title sponsor 
providing a all expense paid spa treatment, give them a, a email or check out their website uh, for more information. Um, this week coming up, guys, we have CPI. So inflation is this week. So look out for some big moves um, from, from the CPI news. Um, and also IMF is meeting next week. So we could get some, some shakeups in the markets. Um, one thing, oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention, Jean-Luca got his Afro from me. Now you see you see what my hair looks like now, right? <laughs> John Luca got his afro from me. So I'm I'm the um the black hand. John Luca is the blue hand. And this was way back in the day. I kind of said to him, you know, you should try and grow your hair one day. And um, I think he took he took my advice and he's rocking it better than me. Yeah, actually. You need to get your you need to get your fro back, bro. <laughs> I wish <laughs> honestly I, I wish I could need a hat. I have to get a new new type of hat, dude. Yeah, yeah. I get yeah, a, a, a lot bro. much. Bigger. He's got a back the cool man. It's like yeah. it's it's like his brand though, isn't it? Like you talk about brand yeah. awareness and selling points. And uh, someone said in the comments, he's noticeable. Yes, he's like a, like a yeah. young Kenny Kravitz as well. You know, he, like you couldn't miss you couldn't miss John Luca, could you? It's, it's, that is yeah. like his identity, his it's brand. Not, and it's, uh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. A, he's a cool dude. Fair play, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's he's doing it, and he's doing a great job too. I think um, just having that perspective because I think a lot of times I don't know if you guys find this. But I'm focusing on just trading and trying to just get that at trading. But he's reminded me it's actually a bigger picture. It's actually personal finances. It's how much is enough yeah. is, is a simple question. But if you just need to make, um, let's say, I don't know, a number, $500 a week or whatever, don't try and make $10,000 in a week. It's not realistic. You know, yeah. but just being realistic is key. Yeah, it's a good good point. I don't know if you remember Gary, the scruffy yeah. trader. He said something similar, didn't he? He has bank. Yeah. Remember, it's like a couple of uh, hundred dollars a week because all he needed, and he's like, I've said it to get. And yeah, he was the same. Once he hits bank, he shuts off. And he just enjoys his life. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what it. it's about. Not being not being greedy. Yeah. I think is key. Um, also, for next year, we have to do another big games. We had a lot of good feedback. Um, my son needs a chance to uh, improve on his performance. So next year, I think big games is, is definitely in order. And again, congratulations, PJ, for representing yeah. the team. You did it. You, you did well. And congratulations to the winners as well. Yes, thank congratulations you. Congratulations, Justin. Amazing. Yeah, Justin. Uh, Good job. PJ saved a blush here, so well done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where did you finish? Right. I didn't... Uh... My screen wouldn't scroll down <laughs> after. <laughs> um, so I, uh, <laughs> I don't think I don't think anybody finished worse than me. That's what I'll say. I, actually, talking about finishing well, let's just talk a little bit about um, Arsenal. Arsenal's been doing okay, hasn't it? I'm not trying to change the subject Game or anything. Tomorrow. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're playing, we're playing Liverpool tomorrow at Anfield. I think you're going to win. Okay. And I think okay. if you win, win that game, I think you've won the title. And to be honest, obviously, I want Manchester United to win the title, but we are going through a transition. And I would rather Arsenal win it than anyone else. Because I remember the, the Wenger-Fergie days, the rivalry, yeah. Roy, Roy Keane yeah, and Vieira. Yeah. And I used yeah. to love it. Like sun, Sunday football, it was, it was just amazing. And uh, yeah, it was really good. So yeah, and Arsenal, they're playing good football. But what I will say about you guys, Arsenal... I do remember you saying Arteta out last year, and look what he's taking you now. So, uh, yeah, yeah, go on. I, 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 job. I, 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 if anyone's going to win it this year, I'd, I'd like it to be Arsenal. We played really good football. So, and this is coming from a United fan. I don't think we can we can top that, PJ. Uh, but that, that's, no, it's well said. I just got to take your hat off to United to where they were to where they are now. This uh, Eric Ten Hag done an amazing mm -hmm. job. Yeah, we've had a couple of thumpings this year, but. You know, I think Old Trafford, it's like a like a fortress again. And he takes he takes no shit, does he? You know, he, he got rid of Ronaldo and Ronaldo is the goat. To do that. Yeah, he yeah. is the goat. And then uh Marcus Rashford, he was late for dinner and he dropped him from a game. And that hasn't happened in a long time. So yeah. Yeah, so United, I think United will be a team, a, a team to watch next year again with Arsenal. It's gonna be good. I can't wait. Maybe we should do another channel and uh, cover some football, shall we? 
Yeah, so let's do it. Let's do it. We should do a football channel. Just keep growing. Watch along with, with, with all the guys. Yeah, all the Gunners yeah. fans can talk now. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah we'll finally. Our transition. You know, all Arsenal fans. It's just me. I can see it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching and sticking sticking with us. These are our real, I think, the, the genuine, true uh, diehards who have um, stuck with us all the way through the show. And um, I thought the show went well, guys. Um, yeah, that was good. I suppose we're just, we're just talking now, staying live. But yeah, it was a good show. Jo John Luke, he's, he's great. But I, I always watch some of the shows back and we got, we've had some really, really good guests. And I think we just need to revisit maybe guest one. And ask them yeah. would they yeah. be interested in coming back, or maybe we just get guest one, two, and three on the same show. And let's get mm -hmm. a panel going because yeah. uh, I remember obviously uh, Terry too cool. I thought she was, you know, she was cool. Yep. She was really good. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had Vachana and we had Ryan. Yeah, Ryan was really good. Yep. I, I'd like to see where Ryan is now compared to where he was when we interviewed him. I'd like to yep. see what, what progress Ryan has made. Has he come across any new strategies? You know, has he got anything you would like to share with us? So I'd like to get Ryan back. And I, the list goes on, isn't it? Uh, was it Nikki as well? Sorry, yeah, yeah. Nikki. Yeah. 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 yeah, Shannon. Shannon Thompson was good. Yeah, Shannon uh, did a great job too. So yeah. I, just, I just go through all the guests. Everyone was exceptional. So maybe, I don't know, guys, it's up to you. Maybe the next one. Let's try and get three three of them back. And we just have a panel. We just have a little yeah. chit chat. And let's just see what, let's just have a review and see what everyone's been up to for the last year or two. I think I'll be good. Yeah, let's make it happen, guys. Let's make yeah. it happen. Um, yeah. Let's so do it. yeah, so Saturday here, uh, it's Easter weekend, but so we're gonna, happy uh, Easter yeah. from Signature FX. Happy Easter to everyone who's uh, who's remembering and uh, have have a, have a good weekend. I say, but yeah, the yeah. weather's great here for once. So in the UK now, we have got eight weeks of good weather. So we're really gonna make the most of it. If it starts raining again. So uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's nice here too. Um, we have That's we it. have some sun, some sun, sunny skies. Yeah. Oh, what's the temperature? What's the temperature? Oh, it's roasting here, and it was about like twelve degrees Celsius. Like, what's so. that? In, what, I forgot what <laughs> that is right now. Yeah. Fahrenheit. It sounds hot. Um, it sounds hot. It's not hot. No, it's not. I know it's like it takes what twenty-eight degrees for it to be like eighty-two. Yeah, like, uh, so 28 degrees in the UK, like that's that's a tropical summer for us. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody sunbathing in the parks. Yeah, it, it is. It is like that. But, but you live in Mandela, you know. You know what it's like. We get about eight yeah. weeks of sunshine in the year. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's all good. It's all yeah. Good. All right. We don't. We never plug ourselves, so we should just say contact us, people. Please contact us if you want to get in our groups. Yeah. If you so like what we, we say. Reach out to Mandela and PJ uh, for the WhatsApps if you if you got the yeah. numbers. Uh, yeah. Instagram signature dot fx dot official. Uh, we're gonna yeah. start putting uh, more setups in that group. Then we've all got uh, Twitter accounts, so we got at signature fx and we got www dot signature dot com. Just reach out, guys, and let's talk. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys. Great show. Um, we guys catch up. Um, Maybe have a little after after show, um, but yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks have all. A great holiday weekend. Take it easy, guys. Appreciate it. Have stay safe. Peace. Yeah.